In this video, we'll be talking about the events of genomic imprinting. Genomic imprinting refers to the monoallelic and parent-specific expression of a subset of genes found in our genome. So we have two versions of any gene. For example, imagine a gene which is gene X. It would have a version coming from the mother and coming from the father. Now the question is whether both these versions are expressed and giving rise to its protein product or any other product. So some genes doesn't do that. Most of the genes are expressed from both the versions, but in some case, there are genes which are expressed only from mother or only from father. Those have monoallelic expression and these are known as imprinted genes. Question is, who sets the rules such that either the mother derived gene is expressed or the father derived gene is expressed? So how this is happening at the molecular level? It turns out the key phenomenon underlying that is methylation. In a moment, it would be clear. But before that, let me tell you that according to Mendelian ratios, it doesn't really matter whether the gene is coming from the sperm or the ovum, that means father or the mother. But about 100 genes are there for which this really matters whether it comes from the father or mother. These are the imprinted genes in our genomes. So the molecular basis of imprinting can be understood by understanding the DNA methylation. DNA methylation can happen in the promoter region of the gene, the gene body, and it's the key responsible factor for imprinting. Now, promoter methylation typically acts to repress the gene transcription. In sometimes gene body methylation may promote transcription as well. So methylation is highly contextual. Whether it would lead to a gene activation or inactivation is also contextual that we can appreciate in this video. But anyway, who writes this DNA methylation? So who are the writer for this DNA methylation? It turns out there are several enzymes known as DNA methyl transferase, such as DNA methyl transferase 3 or DNMT3. This particular gene is known as de novo methyl transferase that it, it can transfer the methyl group to an unmethylated CG. Now there are other methyl transferases which are known as the perpetuating methyl transferases that means it recognizes a methylated C in one strand and basically it methylates a C in the CG pair of the other strand. So these different methylation enzymes or methyl transferase enzymes ensures that these methyl, uh, methyl group can be transferred onto the DNA and this is the molecular basis for imprinting. And it turns out DNMT1 is really really important because DNMT1 uh, basically uh, knockout embryos has developmental lethality due to imprinting of a transposon gene. Also DNM3C or DNM3L all these mutants are die early. So all these mouse study tells us that all these methylation transferring enzymes are super important in context of gene expression. So how does DNA methylation lead to gene silencing? So imagine we have a region here which is highly methylated shown in red. So obviously it would impede the binding of the uh, RNA polymerase. Indeed, it would bind to specific proteins known as methyl CPG binding protein, which attracts further other molecules such as HDAC or nucleosome remodeling complex that can potentially change the conformation of the chromatin into a close chromatin. This is how methylation can ultimately alter the architecture of the chromatin and thereby change the odds ratio for the gene expression. Now, it's not only the DNA that can be methylated, there could be also histone which is methylated. This video is not about that, so we are not going to delve into details. But it's important to note that histone methylation, again, it's very context specific it could be activatory it could be inhibitory as well now let us take the example to understand the uh, genomic imprinting in bit more details so we would be looking at few genes known as igf2 and h19 in mouse so let us look at the egg derived uh, locus right now so there is an enhancer marked in red and there is a differentially methylated region or dmr in the middle that can potentially bind to ctcf 
Now, when CTCF is bound to the DMR region, the enhancer cannot act on it. So obviously it gets blocked by the CTCF. So it cannot really allow the IGF2 gene expression. So IGF2 is not expressed, but the H19 gene is expressed, which is near to the enhancer. Now, in the sperm derived uh, situation, there is complete different expression dynamics. Why that happens? Because in sperm derived location, there is a enzyme that methylate the DMR region and due to this methylation, the CTCF cannot bind. So when CTCF cannot bind, there is nobody to prevent the enhancer for, for, from acting to the IGF-1 gene expression. So enhancer can act and IGF-2 gene can be expressed in this case. Now, due to the methylation in the DMR region, the H19 gene is not active from this paternal uh, derived locus. So this tells us that possibly how these methylation group can interplay and change the enhancer promoter interaction to give rise to gene, in, uh, gene expression. So this kind of explains how methylation and genomic imprinting works. And this is a very overly simplified video that we talked about. In future videos, we would be delving into details to understand the process of imprinting and how that is associated with disorders. But anyway, there are disorders like Angelman syndrome, preter willi syndrome, which are actually imprinting defect disorders. Anyway, I have videos on that. You can click on the i button to look at it. See you in the next video.